Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday I'm making a garden play screen for the grandchildren. See you in a minute. <laughs> Now amongst all the things I get uh, thrown at me to do, um, I got a picture through on email the other day from my daughter that showed a, a screen that the children could use in the garden to paint on and I don't quite know what but it was something that had come up on Pinterest no doubt and it seemed like a good idea so I thought I'd have a go. So this is the build on that. I got some material that was left over from uh, the shed build, some corner post material, and I found a few bits down at the, Wor the Worcester Recycling Centre that were sufficient to do the framework, and I used up some of the perspex that I bought the sheet for, I think it was five pounds for a four by three sheet. So after a quick trip to the local resource centre I've picked up a very large kitchen door uh, that's been taken in. There's obviously a firm that makes kitchens close by and they give them a lot of timber, some of which I've already used before. Um, and I think it's tulip wood, the frames, uh, with an MDF centre. And that door is one point seven nearly what one point nearly one point eight high and five hundred high and what I think I'm going to do is to cut it off down at the bottom and then hopefully that panel will come out and then I can slide polycarbonate in and with the remains of the framework I can redo that bottom end the same as that one uh, round it off tidy it up and we've then got the the panel for the children's garden, for the messy play area that they wanted. Um, that'll need to be stood up on something. Um, I'm thinking I've got probably some three inch post left from the shed build and I also found, which is quite useful, down in the resource place, some of these, I don't know what they're from, but they will slot in a 70mm post fairly tightly and snugly and either with a, a cross piece of timber or just pinning them down to the ground that will give us a decent base for the whole thing to stand on. So that was £2.95, these were a matter of pennies, probably for under £5 because I've got the Perspex that I bought the other week for £5 for a huge sheet. Um, we can have the whole thing built for probably about £5 so that will be a good result. I cut the perspex with the Festool uh, TS55. It's not the best thing to use really, it's a bit very difficult to cut perspex. It would probably have been better to have uh, put a shallow groove in it and snapped it. You can see from the um, video that it, it melts and then sort of forms a little dam around itself uh, and it blocks the blade up and all sorts so it's pretty horrible stuff to to cut uh, but once you've got it to length you can just peel the pieces off I took the large door down to the menin sheds because use, slinging a 1.8 meter door around in the shed wasn't easy um, just to cut it in half and I thought and hoped that the MDF would slide out but it had been glued in, it had been um, routed to fit into the groove rather than it being a narrow piece. So I then spent a bit of time with a, a hammer and chisel just chopping that out. It comes out easily enough, um, there's not a huge amount of glue in there but it did uh, take a while just to get that cleaned up and tidied up.
once you manage to get the chisel underneath the length of it you can just prise it out and get quite a long length at a time usually. Uh, then I set the table saw up to the depth of the, the, the tenons that I was making on the pieces uh, that were the ends so that I just took a, effectively a, a score cut about a third of the way through um, so that it would give me a nice square edge when I did the joints and rather than get too heavily involved in um, joinery I just used uh, the bandsaw to cut the rest of the tenon out. block of wood against the um, fence just to give it a bit of height and to hopefully keep it at right angles to the bed and then it was just cutting down the side of the groove so that the whole thing would slot together to make a frame. Then I just cleaned out all the joints, the um, bits of remaining glue were chiselled out and I just put it up on the workbench and got a rough idea of shape and size and that seemed to be roughly the size I was aiming for so I took it back to the shed so that I could glue it up there. So that's the basic framework now finished with the poly, well the acrylic in it, it's not polycarbon, it's acrylic. Now I've given the um, parts of the screen a base coat of uh, preservative stain, they've had a coat of preservative first, clear, and then I've just given them a base coat stain. That was for two reasons, firstly it gets the edges close to the glass painted so that it's easier to get uh, a cut in line there without it showing if you miss a bit but also it paints inside that groove with another layer of protection. Um, I'm going to bed the actual perspex into um, a silicon mastic and then I'll probably point up around the edges with mastic as well. So that's glue up finished, uh, I've stuck the other side on now, bedded it all in mastic. Just going to give it a final sand of the base coat before I give it a top coat. Now we're getting there now, um, that's been stained and given a coat of external clear varnish so that's now pretty much ready, the screen itself. Um, I was looking at posts and I'd, I had these bases that I'd got from the recycling centre. Um, I was going to use 70 by 70 timber in there to support the sides but I haven't had a chance to get out and get any of that and quite by accident I looked around the side of the house and found I had two lengths of decking handrail that I'd bought uh, for the um, children's play equipment and I decided that that is a pretty good fit over the side. It fits well into there and that will give us a good solid base um, that I can use those bases for it. It'll need some sort of a packer um, but even normal CLS timber will be about right to give me the packing I need I think. Uh, but at least now I've got a base and then I'll just have to find some timber that I can screw in just as a cross piece to give it a bit more strength uh, or a bit more stability. 
So I think I'm just about there now. I'm just going to stain up these side pieces, drill them, put the inserts in and I shall use a piece of this as well at the bottom as somewhere to put the crayons. It just needs one face planing flat. So I'll plane one, play one face with a, a flat on it so it can just screw to the, the bottom of the screen. The painting was just finished off then with a bit of the uh, Ron Seal quick drying stain that I use. It's a light oak stain and it only takes about 10 minutes to dry. I gave the bases a spray over with some car bumper spray and a bit of green paint just to get them uh, roughly in tune with the, uh, the grass that the thing was going to be on. Then I gave the whole of the rest of the uh, frame a coat of clear varnish. I think that was the just a bit of Wilco satin varnish. And then peeled all the masking tape off and that was pretty much job done. Well that's another one down. Hope to see you all again next week and we'll try and build something different then. See you. Bye.